Hey, do you have a fondness for the color orange, more muscles than brains, and a comb-resistant hairdo? Did you spend years of your life traveling around the world fighting numerous enemies, making friends, going on adventures, and growing stronger so you can make a wish on a dragon's balls? Wait, did I read that right? Well, congratulations! You might be a Sun Soul Monk. But what is a Sun Soul Monk? Well, make sure to pack your dragon radar, spend at least 12 episodes powering up before a big fight, and go ahead and crank that 90s nostalgia. No, sorry, that real 90s nostalgia. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the good shit. What is it about the gizzards of the gulf and just straight up copy-pasting anime pro tags into monk subclasses? I mean, I'm not complaining that much as a resident weeb of the D&D community, I actually appreciate the overlap, but it does seem like every other monk subclass I cover is ripped directly out of a page of Shonen Jump. And that wouldn't be such a bad thing when it's done well, but needless to say, their track record has been pretty hit or miss. But we'll get to that. In the meantime, who did they steal from now? Oh, nobody big. Just the most recognizable anime franchise of all time. A series that not only introduced millions of Western fans to the magic of Japanese animation, but also caused generations of kids to scare the shit out of their parents by screaming the iconic... Did they think we wouldn't notice? <laughs> and seeing as one of my favorite series in all of Weebdom happens to be the good old DBZ, and I'm coincidentally fresh off a rewatch for what's probably the hundredth time, I feel like I'm in a good place to take point on whether or not the rodents of the river did my boy here justice. But they better not fuck it up. I'm just saying. But first... Do you think the Lord of the Rings would have been a lot simpler if Frodo and Sam had just flown a helicopter into Mordor? Are you itching to add a little GTA to your D&D &D so you can RPG away your ADHD? Well, if this sounds like you, you should grab yourself a copy of Everyday Heroes from Evil Genius Games. Brought to you by the same guys behind D20 Modern from 20 years ago, this 5e compatible TTRPG brings your fantasy roleplay into the modern era. Enjoy the same roleplaying strategy and rule sets from your favorite Dungeons & Dragons experience, but now with more car crashes, computers, and and of course, Boomsticks. This 500-page book comes with 20 playable classes, 6 archetypes, as well as new mechanics to thrive in your modern fantasy. And with over 200 five-star reviews, Everyday Heroes has a perfect score on drive-thru RPG, so you know it must be good. To get your copy of Everyday Heroes, make sure to hit my link below and enter the code YIMBA10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. That's YMBA10 at checkout for 10% off. But as always, tell them YIMBA sent you. A huge thank you to Evil Genius Games for sponsoring the show, and now, back to the video. So you want to learn how to fight good, sling energy beams, and scream for hours on end without passing out? Well, to do that, you gotta start out as a monk. Monks are best known for solving problems with their fist, relying on their speed and agility to deliver hefty smacks to the face, and then dip out of a fight when things get hairy. And through your travels, you've learned from the best, whether it's the turtle man, the little blue guy on the tiny planet, or whatever Mr. Popo is. Giving you martial arts to use your dex mod for unarmed strikes, which do a d4 of damage, and the ability to spend a bonus action to follow up with an extra attack on your turn. You also get unarmored defense, and while your gi is pretty stylish and lets you rep your current master symbol, it usually gets ripped off sometime during a fight. So instead, you just rely on your dex and wisdom mods to boost your AC to keep you out of trouble. You also get key at second level, which specifically isn't magic, but looks like magic, so we'll call it muscle magic? That allows you to pull off certain moves on your bonus action by spinning a key point. Spinning key this way lets you use step of the wind to dash or disengage, patient defense to take the dodge action, or flurry of blows to add an additional attack to your bonus action unarmed strikes. But we also get unarmored movement, add an additional 10 feet to our movement speed when not wearing armor, so we can blitz through a battlefield to size up the strongest opponent, usually just in time to watch a friend die. And dedicated weapons so we can focus our key on a weapon we're proficient in so it works like a monk weapon, which I guess explains why Trunks brought a sword to a hand laser fight. Speaking of hand lasers, with enough time and patience we fought countless foes, from green demon guys, three-eyed dudes with insane traps, and this mystery fighter no one's ever seen before, and learn to control our key to near perfection. This allows us to replace place our unarmed attack with a blast of our key and send it flying toward an enemy within 30 feet. The damage from this ability is radiant and equals the same damage as your monk die, so you're just essentially doing the same thing as your regular punchies, and you can spend a key point to essentially flurry of blows to send two extra key blasts as a bonus action. And in true DBZ fashion, this ability keeps growing as you level up, letting you replace any attack in your extra attack option with a key blast letting you punch and shoot at the same time. But you also get deflect missiles to knock away incoming ranged weapon attacks 
attacks, reducing the damage by 1d10 plus your dex mod and your monk level, and letting you yeet that bad boy back if the damage is reduced to zero. At 4th level we grab Slow Fall, which unfortunately isn't flying, more like falling with style, but allows us to leap from great heights and take no damage without even having to call on Nimbus. But we're here for that extra attack at 5th level, for 2 attacks per round or 4 with a flurry of blows, and Stunning Strike to deliver the gut punch from hell on an enemy that left themselves open. On a hit, you can spin key to stun a target, forcing them to succeed a constitution save, so get creative on how you want to lay the smack down, because while a shot to the ribs is good, biting them also seems to be just as effective for some reason. Reason. Your monk die also increases to a d6 at this level, which is good because we also get focused aim to redirect attacks by spinning key, potentially turning a miss into a hit, which also works with key blast so you can swerve them back at your opponent. At 6th level, we develop key empowered strikes to overcome resistances to non magical damage so we can punch magical creatures like Fortune Teller Baba or Kami, but also ghosts like Grandpa Gohan. Alright, I'll be honest, that one made me sad. But we also get the Searing Arc Strike, to spend two key points to cast Burning Hands as a bonus action, and while not exactly a it more of a single. it does let you spread solid damage to a few enemies at once, and you can spend additional key to increase the spell's level, doing more damage as long as the maximum level of the spell is equal to half your monk level. But that's a lot of words just to say you can shotgun your key at people. At 7th level you pick up evasion to take 0 damage on successful deck saves and only half damage on a failure because even though you get blown up a lot the only thing that seems to get hurt is your shirt. And stillness of mind and a charming or frightening effect on yourself as an action but let's face it you might just be too dumb to realize you've been charmed in the first place. At 9th level our unarmored movement allows us to run up walls and over water which feels more like a Naruto thing but I'm not complaining and purity of body at 10th level to become completely immune to disease unless it's a heart virus from space I guess. At 11th level our monk die bumps up to a d8, but instead we can rely on the key from our friends and neighbors to utilize the secret ability known only to us and King Kai. The Spirit Bomb. Or Searing Sunburst? It's a spirit bomb. As an action you gather radiant energy into an orb above your head and can send it flying to a range of 150 feet, forcing a constitution saving throw to anyone within a 20 foot sphere and dealing 2d6 radiant damage on a failure. You can also pour more key into this attack to up the damage to a maximum of 8d6. Just remember this attack only works on evil and not the righteous, so bounce that bad boy around and let it hit the monkey man who thinks he's your prince or something. 13th level gets us the tongue of the sun and moon so that all creatures can understand what you're saying which makes a lot of sense some of your best friends are aliens and there never seems to be a language barrier and you also get diamond soul at 14th level for proficiency in all saving throws and the ability to spend a key to re-roll a save if you fail because as an anime protagonist being good at pretty much everything kind of comes with the territory except being a good dad apparently but with Timeless Body at 15th level, you also no longer feel the effects of aging, being able to sustain yourself on key alone, but that's not going to stop you from eating anyway. And finally, maybe it's all the stress from these long battles, or maybe it's watching your best friend from childhood explode in front of you, but something inside snaps. You see, they aren't dealing with the average Saiyan warrior anymore. You've risen above and become a legend. The legend they fear. The legendary Super Saiyan. As your monk die bumps up once again to a D10, you experience a whole new level of power, shedding light from all around you in a 30 foot radius. Your light is violent too, letting you expend a reaction to deal damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack for damage equal to 5 plus your wisdom modifier. But I think it's the bright yellow hair that's the talk of the town. But wrapping up, once you've calmed down, you can spend 4 key points at 18th level to become invisible for a minute and gain resistance to all damage except force. And spend 8 key points to cast Astral Projection on yourself so you can go to Otherworld, I guess? And at 20th level, you get back 4 key points anytime you roll initiative without any, which is shit. So, is the Sun Soul Monk worthy of Sun Goku? <sighs> no. Alright guys, here's the part that hurts. As much as I love Dragon Ball, this subclass does not do my boy here justice. There are just so many other monk subclasses that do what they set out to do way better, and I can't help but feel like something is missing here. There's just so little to do compared to the abilities from other monks that I almost feel like I read the wrong sheet, but nope, that's it. 
In terms of raw damage, this subclass gets left in the dust, and the idea of having a ranged monk is neat, but kinda falls flat when two of your abilities still require you to be close to pull them off. On top of that, you can't add feats or plus one bonuses from items to your key blast, you kinda just gotta hope you roll high in later level fights. Hell, your key blast can't even be used as a bonus action on arm strike unless you spin key to do it twice, which feels like a mistake, but that's how it's worded. Which makes me weirdly torn on this subclass because while while I think it's comparatively weak, I have a player in one of my campaigns that uses a Sun Soul Monk and she's kicking ass with it. So I've seen that it can work just under the right circumstances. What's unfortunate is that the Sun Soul Monk doesn't even really do the thing that it seems to want to do, and because of that it doesn't feel like Goku at all. It feels like Yamcha. Wow, okay, I really didn't think I'd be making this comparison, but yeah, actually, the Sun Soul Monk may look like Goku in form but in reality it just sucks. However, there is good news, and I'm obviously not the only one who's talked about this in the past. In fact, there's been some great videos on how to improve the Sun Soul Monk to actually be decent, so if you're interested, I think you should check those out. But if you're not looking to be super strong or well-written, the Sun Soul Monk can still be fun. I think people play D&D less for the raw combat prowess and more for the immersion, and while I think the Sun Soul Monk pretty much needs a complete overhaul, it's not so bad it's unusable, just suboptimal, as some would say. So, I guess even bootlegged and half-assed, the Dragon Ball Z still shines through enough to save this subclass from the trash bin. But if you did so many sit-ups it allows you to shoot magic from your hands, you're still waiting on your best friend to install the muffin button in your super futuristic spaceship, and we're inspired by the series that captured the hearts and minds of so many young people it has forever changed how the craft is viewed throughout the world, cemented its creator's place with the legends of the anime industry, and created something so timeless that it will forever be enjoyed over and over and over again without fail for many years to come. Guess what? You might be a Sun Soul Monk.